15 Facts About Money Heist You sure heard of the trending Netflix series Money Heist that has been a huge success for the last years. From script changes to character secrets, here are 15 things you didn't know about Money Heist. Number 1. It is the most watched non-English series on Netflix. The first season of Money Heist was released on Netflix in December of 2017, and by the time the streaming giant released the second season in 2018, the show had become a massive hit. In fact, within the first four weeks of its release, season 3 was viewed by 44 million households across non-English language regions. It is also the most viewed Netflix series in countries such as Portugal, Brazil, Chile, Argentina, Italy, and France. Number 2. The script for each season is written simultaneously as the episodes are filmed. When following the show's complex narrative, it is easy to assume that the plots are created and scripts are written months before shooting begins. In reality, the process is quite the opposite of that. Instead of finishing the scripts beforehand, the writers do it in parallel with filming. According to the show's creators, this process helps them better understand what the scripts need and allow them to adopt as they move forward. The main downside to this process is that the actors often do not get enough time to rehearse their scenes, which is why they often resort to doing video calls with the screenwriters. Number 3. The series was originally going to be called Los Diaciados. If you watch the show in English, you might be familiar with the name Money Heights. However, the series is actually called La Casa de Papel, which means the paper house, when literally translated from Spanish. Surprisingly, this name was not the first choice for the series. During the conception phase, the creators used the title Los Diaciados, which means the evicted. That name was quite fitting when you think about the show's characters and social outcasts. Number 4. The show was considered a failure and was nearly cancelled before it was picked up by Netflix. La Casa de Papel premiered on Antenna 3, a Spanish terrestrial TV channel, in 2017. Over 4 million viewers tuned in to watch the show, and it was deemed as one of the most successful premieres in the history of Spanish TV. However, despite receiving rave reviews, the show lost its viewership as time passed. By the time the finale aired, less than 50% of the original viewers tuned in to watch. As the audience lost interest in the show, the show's creators and the actors accepted the idea that the show might be cancelled. Thankfully for us, Netflix picked it up and made it a part of their international catalog. After acquiring global streaming rights, Netflix recut the show into 22 episodes and released them worldwide without much promotion. Despite this, viewers found this show and fell in love with it, making it the success it is today. Number 5. All the members of the gang were originally going to be terminally ill. According to sources, the writers had initially planned the fate of each gang member quite differently. They were all going to have some form of terminal illness, which was going to serve as the primary motivation behind their decision to go to the risky heist. However, in the end, the creators went against the plan and it was only Berlin who had a terminal illness. Number 6. The show was originally going to be narrated by the professor himself. Fans of the show love the professor, the incredibly smart, charismatic, yet shy mastermind behind the heist. Naturally, many people have wondered why he does not narrate the show, which centers around him and his plan. In truth, the professor was the first choice as the narrator for the show, but the creators thought that it would be too narcissistic for him to narrate his own plan. Ultimately, they chose Tokyo to be the narrator, as they wanted to have a woman's perspective in the predominantly masculine setting. Number 7. Denver's laugh was part of the script even before Jamie Laurenti was chosen for the role. Denver is among the most loved characters on the show, and he is known for his unique laugh. Though most people assume it to be the actor's way of playing the role, the laugh was actually written into the script long before Jamie Laurenti got the role. The script simply mentioned trashy laughter as part of the character's trait, and everyone who auditioned for the part interpreted it differently. Many people have likened Denver's laugh to that of Danny Zuko's in Greece. To that comparison, Lorento says that he did not intend to copy John Travolta, even though Grease was one of his favorite movies growing up. To the fans who might still be wondering, Jamie Lorente does not actually laugh like that in real life. 
Number 8. Natalie Portman's Matilda from the movie Leon heavily inspired Tokyo's look. According to the show's creators, the character of Tokyo was the hardest to develop. Originally, they wanted to cast an older actress into the role, but Ursula Corbero's playful energy won them over. When talking about her character on the show, Corbero mentioned that her look was heavily inspired by Matilda, played by Natalie Portman, in the 1994 action thriller The Yawn the Professional. From the costumes and accessories to the short fringe haircut, the characters share a similar appearance. Number 9. The character of Nairobi was written for Alba Flores. Soon after the show aired, Nairobi became a fan favorite. Everyone loves the cool-headed single mom turned expert forger. That is why it is amusing to think that the series originally did not have the character. However, when writing the script, the creators realized that the series just does not work with Tokyo as the only woman in the gang. Alba Flores, who has worked with Alex Pina on another project, was offered the role and the character was written specifically for her. Number 10. Alvaro Mort backed the role of the professor after five editions. The professor, played by Alvaro Mort, is certainly the most enigmatic character of the series. We see him as the socially awkward genius who ends up caring deeply for the members of the gang. It's easy to admire and love the professor, and that is mainly because Alvaro Mort makes the fictional character come to life and feel real. However, the role did not come easily to him. In an interview, Mort said that he had to do five auditions over the course of two months before he was chosen for the part. Number 11. The building that was shown in Season 1 and Season 2 of the series is not actually the Royal Mint of Spain. In Part 1 and 2 of the series, we see the gang of misfits carry out their first heist at the Royal Mint of Spain. The realistic set design and the amount of detailing can convince anyone that they have shown the actual royal mint of Spain. However, shooting inside or outside the mint is strictly prohibited due to security reasons. That is why creators used the Spanish National Research Council building, the exterior of which bears a striking resemblance to that of the royal mint. The rest of the scenes were shot in a studio. Number 12. The gold vault that we get to see in Season 3 actually exists. In Part 3, we see the bandits take over the Bank of Spain and attempt to steal the gold that is kept inside a highly secured vault that gets flooded when there is a breach. So they had to scuba dive into the water-filled vault to fetch the gold. It is certainly one of the best scenes in the entire season, if not the series, and it is also very accurate. The Bank of Spain in Madrid has a gold vault that fills up with water to trap possible intruders and prevent the bullion from being stolen. However, it is one of the many security measures put in place to secure the vault. Number 13, the money shower scene in Season 3 was one of the hardest to shoot. In the very first episode of Part 3, we get to see the awesome money shower scene. It goes like this. On the day of the heist, the professor has a blimp fly directly above central Madrid. And then, when the gondola opens, money rains down on the unsuspecting crowd below. A total of 140 million euros was poured over the city that day. The scene is just as grand as it sounds, and filming it proved to be extremely difficult for the creators of the show. That is mainly because the weather turned out to be erratic. While some shots were sunny, others were gloomy and at one point it rained and the street and fake money got drenched. The crew had to blow dry the street in order to make the scene work. Number 14. The show has multiple references to Quentin Tarantino and his 1992 film Reservoir Dogs. Money Heist takes inspiration from different movies related to robberies and heists. The Ocean series and Tarantino's film Reservoir Dogs are the most noteworthy. There are many similarities between Reservoir Dogs and Money Heist. For example, in both instances, a group of strangers that use code names unite to pull off a heist. In one scene, Nairobi even complains to Berlin and says something along the lines of shooting someone rather than cutting their ear off. Here, she is actually referring to the movie Reservoir Dogs, in which there is a scene where Michael Madsen's character cuts off a policeman's ear. In another scene, during an altercation with Berlin, Nairobi tells him to calm down as it is not a Tarantino film. Number 15. The iconic song Bella Ciao appears more times than we may have realized. Bella Ciao, an Italian folk song, 
was recently made famous after it was used many times throughout the show's four seasons. However, references to the song can be found more times than most of us may have noticed. For example, during the opening credits of season 3, we can see the words Una Matina Mi Sona Al Zato written above a doorway. If you have listened to the song carefully, you will know that this is actually the opening line of Bella Ciao.